Now the most important thing to think about whenever you're doing any building or landscaping project is to choose materials that actually fit comfortably in their environment. Now in this case we've got a beautiful old rectory and it would be pointless to use a very modern material that just doesn't look right. Now in this case we're going to be using the Marshall's Chancery paving. Now it's got the impression of a natural stone, it really is very very nice indeed. The edges are natural and informal, the top has actually been crafted so it really does look like the real thing. And because we're using mixed slabs here, mixed sizes, the effect is going to be very soft and natural and it won't just shout out at you like some landscaping projects you see. Now you could use these on their own, quite simply, but what I want to use is also a combination of these things here. Now these are called um, clay sets or cobbles and what you actually do, you chop these down to form little cubes and I'm going to use these as a combination with this material here so we've got a different surface but it just adds to the overall effect and we're going to use a lot of greenery here as well to soften it also. Now I wanted to use a water feature here as well that also ties in with the theme and Marshalls do these as well which I think are fantastic. Now there's a the small one there or the large one it's like a, a millstone that they used to crush flour with and they really are superb and once the water's flowing through those with cobbles around the outside it's going to give a nice soothing feeling to this area here but to save wasting money on materials it's important to work out exactly what you're doing so let's take a look at my plan now the importance of a design is it's all to scale you know exactly the amount of materials you're going to use and we're going for clipped formal box through here so the whole thing is a traditional feel we're using the chancery paving here uh, the little clay cobbles around the four box trees which will give us the greenery and the millstone water feature there as you come in you're going to pass that wonderful water feature. Now as we've prepared the site the soil is actually a little bit high up on the building here so we've cleared that away so it's at least two bricks below the damp course just to be safe we're leaving a little bit of a border here in case you want some flowers and the paving will start here on top of this type 1 aggregate that's been compacted down. Now I'm trying to get a feel of where the little clay cobbles are going to go around the box tree so I'm simply positioning the box trees on top of the aggregate these are the the clay cobbles here all we've done is from that brick we use a hammer and bolster to get eight little air, little cobbles like this which are very rough around the edges gives it a lovely natural feel and really complement nicely with the chancery paving so the next thing we need to do is to get some sharp sand on top of this aggregate and use the whacker plate to make it solid before we lay our first paving. Well, Tony's starting to lay the first of the slabs, which is the exciting bit. We've done all the preparation, which is vitally important. Compacted in the hardcore, we've compacted in the sharp sand. We're now using the sand and cement mix, three or four to one sand and cement, soft sand. Uh, we've used line to get the levels along the house to make sure that we're straight along the house and we've checked the levels going down so that we can run the slabs downhill to the driveway. Now if you're experienced like Tony here you can pretty much pick up the slabs and lay them randomly as you like but if not you can follow the patterns that you get in the Marshalls brochure. Now the reason we chose the chancery slabs it matches so beautifully with the existing stone that's here already you can hardly tell the difference. Now we've laid the chancery paving on a three to one soft sand and cement mix. We've left gaps ready for pointing later on. And now we're seeing how these wonderful little clay cobbles are looking. Now I love the contrast between the red here and the gray. It's really much softer and warmer. It's a lovely mix of materials. Now we're laying these quite simply on the compacted sand base. We've roughed it up just a little bit so we can just slightly bed in. A couple of millimeters proud of the paving so that when we firm this down it just brings it down to the same level. We're leaving the gaps about two to five millimeters apart ready for the dry sand to be brushed in. Now on a larger area you could use a whacker plate. In this case we're quite simply going to use a block of wood and a mallet but we must do that after we finished off and put the dry sand in between.